Welcome to the Duathlon Show. In this episode, Everything Athlon. If you say duathlon to a civilian, a person who does not run duathlons or triathlons or does not participate in the multi-sport competition world, if you say duathlon to them, they'll probably say, do you mean triathlon? Triathlon is relatively well known, at least in this country, United States. But there are also some other athlons besides our big brother triathlon and our dear close to heart duathlon. You may have heard of biathlon or pentathlon. There are even more than that. In this episode, we're going to get into them. We're going to explore as many athlons as we can possibly find. And we're going to call upon our scholarly allies, Google and Wikipedia. First up on our athlon rundown is the evil twin of duathlon, biathlon. The biathlon is a winter sport that combines cross-country skiing and rifle shooting. It is treated as a race with contestants skiing through a cross-country trail whose distance is divided into shooting rounds. Now you or I might describe this as a multi-sport event. Multi-sport, as I'm control effing here, is not present in the body of the Wikipedia article, although it is linked at the bottom of the Wikipedia article, so there's no explicit declaration here that biathlon might be a multi-sport. Biathlon is definitely in the Olympics, though, so by one measure that would make biathlon a, quote, real sport, end quote. We're going to discuss real sports and fake sports several times during this episode. We also have to talk about popularity or name recognition. The best way to check that is Googling the word biathlon, seeing how many results come up, then maybe comparing that to our favorite topic, duathlon. As our baseline, when you Google duathlon on Google, at least at this date and time, you get 8 million, around 8 million results for duathlon on Google. For biathlon, the skiing and shooting, that's 27 million. So by that measure, the fact that biathlon is in the Olympics and has 27 million results and duathlon has 8 million results and is not in the Olympics, you might say duathlon is not a real sport. I gotta say it's been a pretty rough start for duathlon on its very own podcast. Let's put the numbers in a even more clear perspective. Duathlon, 8 million results on Google. If you put in triathlon, 128 million results on Google. So, someone do the math there. In the UK, you guys can do the maths. I'm not doing either because I'm a left brain person or a right brain person. I can't remember which one. I'm the side of the brain that doesn't do the maths. Next big athlon sport that you may or may not have heard of is pentathlon. Penta five. Athlon sport. So five sport as opposed to duathlon, which we know is two sport. Also opposed to biathlon, which unfortunately is also two sport simply that the two sports are different sport from each other. There is running and biking in duathlon, and there is cross-country skiing and shooting in biathlon. In triathlon, you swim, bike, and run, as we know. And the Norwegians are really good at all three of these sports. The ancient Olympic pentathlon was an athletic contest at the ancient Olympic Games of ancient Greece. Well, that follows. The name derives from Greek. That also follows. The five sports in the ancient Olympic pentathlon were the stadion, a short foot race. How short? Let's call that a thousand meters. 
followed by the javelin throw, the discus throw, and the long jump. And finally ends with wrestling. That is a good ancient Olympic Greek day out, I would say. These events were thought to be part of training for military service because each of the five events was considered to be useful in battle. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Ancient Olympic pentathlon was a real sport because it was in the Olympics in ancient times, but it is no longer a real sport because it says ancient at the beginning, and if it was still a real sport, it would just say Olympic pentathlon on its Wikipedia article. So, sorry, ancient Olympic pentathlon. While you do sound like a great event as part of training for ancient military service, perhaps in the Bronze Age, you are no longer a real sport. Ancient Olympic pentathlon is pentathlon one out of three that we'll be discussing here. The second is athletics pentathlon. Athletics pentathlon was in the Olympics three times in 1912, 1920, and 1924. It consists of five track and field events. But later the event was dropped because Decathlon, decathlon, tin athlon became the international standard. We'll discuss decathlon later. So let's really move on from athletics pentathlon because it is not an Olympic sport any longer in the men's or the women's side. Sorry, not a real sport. Next we have modern pentathlon. Modern pentathlon is fun because it's modern in the sense of modernity as a period that is over. So it's modern in the art critic sense, which is not the real world person sense. Art critics don't think or function that way. It's modern in the art critic sense of like the modern art period was when Picasso was doing his thing and then Rothko was a postmodernist perhaps. I'm not sure. The point is, modernity is over. It maybe ended in, like, the 60s, and then we got postmodern, and now we're contemporary. So I think right now contemporary art is art you might make in the year 2023. And modern art is impossible to make anymore because you would have had to be making it in, like, 1930s or 1950s or the 1910s, cubism etc. Many styles are part of modernism, but modernism is over. Modern pentathlon is an Olympic sport that is out of that era, or even before, maybe the 1800s. Sounds kind of Napoleonic. It's an Olympic sport consisting of fencing, freestyle swimming, equestrian show jumping, pistol shooting, and cross-country running. The modern pentathlon was first held in 1912, Its rules have changed several times over the years, and here's the unfortunate part. The latest structure, as of the 2020 Olympics, consists of three separate events for fencing, swimming, and equestrian, which determines each athlete's starting time in the final event. That final event is called the laser run. It alternates four legs of laser pistol shooting, followed by an 800-meter run. So four of that. 3,200 meters running in total. I don't like that because this event was described to me as pistol shooting, and now you've got this laser thing that doesn't sound like it even goes bang or produces any smoke at all. I want something Napoleonic, or at least Wild West, you know, like a something cowboy-like. I want them to have to run with a leather holster, maybe flapping about. That may, They should have to be carrying the gun that they use in the final shooting event in every other event. They should have to fence with the weapon on. That's easy. That's just like medieval knight stuff. They should have to freestyle swim with the gun on. So you'd have to figure out some kind of waterproof holster, maybe on your back, and try to smooth that out to become hydro in the water. I don't know how swimming works, so I'm assuming hydro is like hydrodynamic is the comparable word that we use, like aerodynamic for cycling. I hope so. Then, of course, during the equestrian show jumping in the cross-country run, you have to have your, uh, 
You have to have your bandolier on and your holster. Now, as goofy as this all sounds, modern pentathlon is a real sport because it is an Olympic sport. So it's real. Congrats. It may be modern in the sense that, you know, it's like 1880s, but uh, it's still around. Good for you, modern pentathlon. Probably more real than duathlon. Ouch. Another strike for the namesake of this podcast. Moving on to heptathlon. Heptathlon is a very interesting one. Heptathlon does not mean cool athlon like in generations ago American slang where you were hep, H-E-P, like a hep cat, a cool guy. I'm talking jazz age. So no, it does not mean a competition for jazz age cool guys. Heptathlon means a track and field combined event with seven sports that include 100 meter hurdles, high jump, shot put, 200 meters, long jump, javelin throw, and 800 meters. I guess those 200 and 800 meters are runs. Heptathlon is an interesting one because it is an Olympic sport on the women's side, but not on the men's side. Why? We'll explain later, but the decathlon, the 10 flon, is the men's Olympic event. And the women only do seven. I do not know why. I do know that the women used to do only five. They did the aforementioned athletics pentathlon as an Olympic sport for a while. But then they bumped them up to seven starting in 1984 at the Summer Olympics there. But the women do not compete in decathlon, the men's 10 sport event. They compete in heptathlon, the seven sport event. I'd be interested to know from any heptathletes or anyone who knows any decathletes or heptathletes or male or female track and field stars or athletes. How do the women feel about having seven versus the men ten? Interestingly, the dynamic on these things, if you ask the top athletes, are often, we would like our competition to stay the way it is. I know that this has been a controversy in modern pentathlon, the horsey riding, gun shooty one, which we discussed. I think that some organizations want to take out maybe the horse jumpy bit or the laser gun shooty bit because maybe they're too modern and not contemporary enough. Remember, modernity ended in like 1960, so modernity is old and over and stale. We live in the contemporary world right now. So maybe it's too modern and not contemporary enough. So I think that there were some maybe inside the sport or outside the sport stakeholders who were wanting to replace the horsey jumping bet maybe with a different sport. And all the current Olympians and modern pentathlon were like, please do not do that. Why? Because they're good at horse jumping. If they weren't good at horse jumping, they wouldn't be the current Olympic champions and silver medalists and bronze medalists and top competitors. So there's a built-in inertia, I would guess, at any of this sport. So I don't know if any of the women who are competing in the Olympics at the highest level and in the world championships for heptathlon, I don't think any of them probably want to add those extra three competitions if I had to guess, but I have no evidence. I would love to hear from you if you have a perspective. The Duathlon Show at gmail.com. Our beloved Duathlon, the run, bike, run sport, which we are obsessed with, actually gets a point here. Why? Because compared to Heptathlon, which has only 3.75 million results. Duathlon, as we previously discussed, has 8 million Google results. So finally, a sport that is less popular than duathlon, and it's even an Olympic sport on the women's side. Last thing to mention about heptathlon is that if you are an American, you may have heard the name Jackie Joyner Kersey. She was a great champion in heptathlon on the American side. Moving on to decathlon, that's the 10 event, 
event. Decathlon, shockingly, almost approaches triathlon in popularity. You won't believe this. 112 million Google results. Compare that to triathlons, 128 million. You may be thinking, decathlon? I've barely heard of this sport. Is it as big as triathlon, which I definitely heard of, which seems more popular, at least to the layman and to the enthusiastic runner or cyclist? There's actually a very simple explanation for decathlon's huge reach on Google, which some of our European listeners are probably shouting out loud right now, tearing out their hair. How has he not mentioned this already? This is obvious. Decathlon is so big on Google, not because people love the sport that involves 100 meter run, long jump, shot put, high jump, 400 meter run, 110 meter hurdle, discus throw, pole vault, javelin throw, and 1500 meter run. No, it's not actually because of this Olympic sport. It is because decathlon is a major sporting goods retailer in Europe. So if you Google decathlon, it's like Googling Dick's Sporting Goods over here in the United States. You don't get info about the 10 sport combined event. You get info about the major chain sports retailer where many French or UK or probably German or Italian or I don't know where how many locations decathlon has and in what countries, but it's where many of you French and aforementioned triathletes and duathletes probably buy affordably priced race suits or gear or bike shorts or bib shorts. I've heard that they have not the best quality, but affordable and pretty decent stuff over there. I do not believe Decathlon, the store, is big here in the United States. I've never seen a store here in New York or otherwise. There may be some. I have not checked. But anyway, that's why the term Decathlon is huge on Google, because of the store. Back to the sport, which is a combined event in athletics. Athletics is track and field, I guess. I already mentioned the 10 sports. It's interesting that they use the word combined event for all of these pentathlon, heptathlon, decathlon, etc., as opposed to multi-sport, which is the word we use in the duathlon world and in the triathlon world. But I'm pretty sure the concept is the same. Well, maybe not, because maybe a multi-sport has to be bam, 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 like you run then you immediately bike, then you immediately run. These combined events, it indicates to me that the first five events happen on day one and the second five events happen on day two, but thinking it through. Of course, decathlon can't be a multi-sport. Maybe the definition of multi-sport is you have to do them consecutively with only a short transition in between or as short as you can make it, ideally. Because thinking through day one of a decathlon, there's a 100 meter run first in this list, so I assume it comes first. There's a 100 meter run, okay, everybody goes, that's a mass start event. But then the discus throw, you have to go one by one. So you do the 100 meter run, then you probably cool down, and then you stretch, and then you drink some water, and then you toss a discus once or twice, but you have to wait. And then you do the pole vault, that's one by one by one, that's not a mass start event, so you gotta wait. Yeah, okay, so that's a combined event, not a multi-sport. Before we move on from decathlon, just got to give a shout out to the current official decathlon world record holder, who, according to Wikipedia, is Frenchman Kevin Meyer, who scored a total of 9,126 points at the 2018 Decastar in France. Having no context on that amount of points, that's the largest decathlon score I have ever seen. And it's incredible. Café Meher. That's my mint French pronunciation of a man who you might call Kevin Mayer, spelled like John Mayer. Let's take a look. Oh gosh, he's handsome. He's probably even more handsome than John Mayer. Hmm. He is a two-time world champion, 2017 and 2022. 
a two-time Olympic silver medalist at 2016 and 2020, and the world record holder in the do, excuse me, in the decathlon. Freudian slip there. Folks, with Kevin Mehir, we're looking at a man who is still searching. Two-time world champion, but two-time silver medalist? That's got to be heartbreaking. To be the world champion the year after you got silver. So 2016, you got silver. 2017, became the world champion. And then 2020, Tokyo, which actually happened in 2021, you got silver again not gold and then the next year in 2022 you got world champion again so you've come so close he's 31 but this is a man who is still searching here's the good news guys Paris 2024 Paris 2024 Olympics is in Paris as the name would suggest Paris as you've heard capital of France where's Kefi Mehir from France his home Olympics. I'm putting down a bet right now. I'm going to put some money on a futures bet. Kevin Mayer is winning gold medal. Paris 2024 decathlon gold medalist. Wonder what the odds are. I'm not going to look it up. I don't understand odds. I'm not a maths guy, as I mentioned before. No mathematique, as they might say, in Kevin's hometown of Argentui, France. All right, we got to move on before the Duathlon podcast accidentally becomes the world's premier decathlon podcast. I do not want to be multiplied by five in that fashion. Now it's time to really move on to some totally fake sports. Decathlon, very real. Very real. Respect to Kevin Mayer. Moving on to some fake sports, our friends at 220triathlon.com have helpfully compiled some of these fake athlon sports in an article entitled, How Many Different Athlon Sports Are There? I don't think they had the intention of listing these fake sports, but some of these that they've mentioned are very fake. They mentioned duathlon, very real. They mentioned biathlon, triathlon, some of the big ones that we've talked about already. Pentathlon is on their list, heptathlon, and decathlon. But let me mention some other fake ones that they have here. Quadrathlon. If you feel like you still have more to give after a triathlon, no. The quadrathlon might be just what you're looking for. Again, no. This challenging multi-sport event involves four disciplines. Swimming, no thanks. Kayaking, okay, but not in this series. Cycling and running. Swimming, kayaking, cycling, and running. Quadrathlon, no thank you. Next, tetrathlon. Like a pentathlon, but without the fencing. No, that's no. Pentathlon, why would you take the fencing out? It seems the difficult thing in modern pentathlon, which was fencing, swimming, jumping a horse cross-country, pistol shooting, and cross-country running was the horse part. The horse is the barrier to entry. I mean, you can probably find a laser pistol for one fiftieth of the price of a horse, if not even more affordable. One one hundredth, one one thousandth the price of a good horse. So I wouldn't take the fencing away. I mean, a fencing epee or sword is probably way cheaper than a horse as well. So no no tetrathlon for me. That is not a real sport. I have never heard of it. I've barely heard of modern pentathlon. You cannot subtract a sport and consider me to consider you a real sport. Next, tetradecathlon, also known as double heptathlon, 14 disciplines. It takes place over two days and is targeted towards female athletes. That is too many sports, but I'll name them. 60 meters, long jump, 800 meters, shot put, 400 meters, and high jump. That's day one. Day two, 3,000 meters, 60 meter hurdles, pole vault, 1,500 meters, weight throw. That sounds dangerous. Are we talking just like a 15 pound barbell thing? Weight throw? Oof. 
200 meters, triple jump, and then 5,000 meters. That's a 5K, folks. 5,000 meters is a 5K run on a track. Says here the winner of the Tetra Decathlon is the person with the highest overall score after the two days. False. I would have to disagree. The winner of this event is the person who does not participate. 14. Too many events. Can you imagine the variety, how many different types of injuries you could give yourself training for 14 different events? Woof. And finally, the most heavily populated and surreal Athlon sport listed here by our friends at 220triathlon.com is the Icosathlon. Icosathlon. I-C-O-S-A-T-H-L-O-N. Icosathlon. That's hard to say. It consists of 20 events completed over two days. Not one for the faint-hearted. The first day includes 100 meters, long jump, 200 meter hurdles, shot put, 5,000 meters, that's our 5K again, 800 meters, high jump, 400 meters, hammer throw, and 3,000 meter steeplechase. If you've anything left to give, no, I won't. The second day then tackles 110 meter hurdles, discus throw, 200 meters, pole vault, 3,000 meters, 400 meter hurdles, javelin throw, triple jump, and 10,000 meters. That's a 10K on a track. Uh, that's 20 events. That's, that's too many for me. I prefer two events, with the first event being run twice. For example, a duathlon. Run, bike, run. The last few full-on sports we're going to cover here are really interesting. If there had to be a civil war in the multi-sport world, a quathlon and aquabike might end up allying with duathlon against the triathlon hegemony, or a quathlon and aquabike might end up just being vassal states of the evil triathlon empire in this absurd hypothetical. I'm not sure whose side a quathlon and aquabike are on. Which side are you on? Which side are you on? A quathlon has 2.7 million Google results. So that is a sport that is smaller officially than duathlon according to the Google power rankings there. Google has duathlon at 8 million. Aquabike, 5.6 million. But there's some confusion here, which I'll clarify in a moment. Like decathlon, Aquabike may have its numbers inflated by a certain factor. So, Aquathlon, like duathlon, it is a multi sport race which is spiritually descended from triathlon. It consists of continuous run and swim events. So just like duathlon, you do one then the other with short transitions in between. Competitors complete a swim immediately followed by a run over various distances. That seems to me to suggest it's a two-leg thing, so just a swim run, a swim and then run. Let me not confuse you with the term swim run. An aquathlon is actually not a swim run because swim run is something else which we'll get to momentarily. So the aquathlon is a triathlon, but you remove the bike part. For me, that's unfortunate because personally, the cycle leg is my strongest leg in duathlon, at least at the moment. I love running too, but if I had to rank the two sports, cycling first, running second. Um, so having a multi-sport with swimming plus running is... That's just not a fun competition for me. So I'm not interested in the aquathlon. What about the aquabike? Well, aquabike doesn't have thlon in the name, but we can consider it a spiritual cousin. So an aquabike is officially a thlon. We said aquabike actually had more Google results than aquathlon. Why is that? Aquabike, of course, is going to be a multi-sport event where you swim first and then you bike. So probably two legs again, often run 
in conjunction with triathlons and aqua bike for a triathlon organizer is probably the easiest secondary event to also run at the same time as your triathlon. So because it's the first two legs of a triathlon, the swim and bike, the aqua bike is super easy to time. You can probably have the aqua bike division starting at the same mass swimming start or starting in the same wave structure as the rest of your triathletes because they do the first two legs in the order and then they just cut off. So you would swim and then bike, but instead of transitioning to the run, like the rest of the triathletes, the aqua bikers are just done. That probably makes timing really easy. And I think for some triathlons out there, they have a triathlon and they have an aqua bike, but they do not have a duathlon because the duathlon timing probably involves some more logistics. And that's unfortunate for us duathletes. Aqua bike's Google result numbers are juiced, folks. Aqua bike is not clean. It has 5.6 million Google results. Aquathlon has 2.7. Duathlon has 8 million. But Aqua bike, this on Google also covers results for some of these hydro riders things, these pool exercise deals where it's like you're sitting in the shallow end and you're on this, you're on a stand up, sit up bike and you're pedaling underwater as an exercise, maybe for physical therapy or something. So aqua bike, those type of aqua bikes come up on Google results for the multi-sport aqua bike when you simply Google the word aqua bike. But let's move on from aqua bike because that's maybe more popular than aquathlon, maybe not. I'm not sure among triathletes what the most popular discipline has got to be actually i do have a solid guess i bet it's running everyone likes running the best except me no one likes swimming the best unless you're a weirdo there's probably like 10 percent of the triathlon world that is like i love swimming swimming is my strong suit and i bet the other triathletes hate those people but we don't have to deal with them because we are do athletes and our motto as always is stay dry Terminology is very important here. Um, aquathlon and duathlon, and probably aquabike, have all been called biathlon at various points over their histories. Remember that the history of any of these sports in an organized fashion, very new. Since the late 70s and the 1980s, I believe triathlon was invented here in the United States and spread around the world, um, duathlon and aquathlon and aquabike are all the, th those are the three permutations of a triathlon with one discipline removed. Duathlon does it a little bit differently. I'm treating a duathlon as run, bike, run. But keep in mind, in the early years of these sports, there was no definition. And in fact, there still is no definition. Oxford English Dictionary does not include the word duathlon, where it does include the word triathlon. So, you know, all these sports have Wikipedia pages, but some of these Wikipedia pages are mentioning the fact that, yes, in the past, all three of these sports have been called biathlon, because bi means two, do also means two. So in the early days, they were calling a run bike or a run bike run or a swim bike or a swim run. They were calling that biathlon. Since then, I believe sensibly, at least in the English language, we've moved on to the term duathlon, which makes more sense. You want to separate the run, bike, run people from the Norwegians and the other Scandinavians doing their cross-country skiing gun shooting bit. To me, as a duathlon guy, biathlon is like the evil twin doppelganger, blonde version probably like more fit and handsome than duathlon because it's an Olympic sport, but it's also a twin. So it looks like you, it's like the blonde version of you, but more popular, your older twin by one minute, your mother loved best. Maybe spend all their winters in Scandinavia learning to ski while you spend all your winters in Florida learning to nail your time trial position or something so that's why you do duathlon and your older twin blonder more handsome 
more beautiful, is out there winning real gold medals, something currently unattainable to the duathlete. Duathlon not in the Olympics. Last sport we have to mention here that may or may not qualify as a thalon is also Scandinavian. That's becoming a theme. Swim run. One word, swim run. Not an aquathlon, which is the multi-sport, which we already know is swimming and then running, usually in two stages there. This is a swim run, totally different. Also a multi-sport, quote, which involves participants running and swimming over a race course that involves multiple swim and run stages. Typically, participants do not change clothing in transitions, as in other multi-sports such as triathlon. Editor's note, or duathlon. All equipment used by participants has to be carried all the way to the finish line. End quote. That's from Wikipedia. The Wikipedia image is of two fit-looking dudes. They seem to have water shoes on that you can run in, but probably also swim in. Not flippers or anything. I guess because you don't, you do not change clothing. These guys have swim caps on, goggles on the top of their heads, and swim caps. Some kind of flappy paddle thing that the gentleman in front is carrying with his hand. The first swim run race only happened in September second of two thousand six. It's so recent, they know the exact date. It was in Sweden. Swim run is always carried out outdoors and in water where the goal is to go from a starting point to a finish point through a course with at least two swim and two run sections. I think many of these races are through bays where there's a bunch of islands and you kind of island hop, swim one to the other to the other, but you have to run across the islands and peninsulas and swim through the channels. This sport sounds crazy. I would almost maybe even do this before a triathlon because honestly the costumes look less uncool in swim run than they do in triathlon. The whole wetsuit look I'm not into. It's impossible to look cool while swimming. That might be the topic of a future episode. Sorry, triathletes. Sorry, Iron Men and Iron Women. Sorry, Tony Stark. Sorry to all the Robert Downey Juniors out there. But if I had to swim in a competition, actually, swim run seems more interesting than triathlon. It would have to be somewhere very warm for me to participate. But imagine yourself running and swimming across a bay, island hopping, Gosh, that'd be exhausting. I can't imagine if it was a long race, longer than an hour, trying to fuel that properly. Like, you try to be, probably try to be carrying gels in pockets on yourself. Like, could you even take a bar? Could you eat a bar? Would it get soaked? By some measures, unfortunately, for duathlon, swim run, even though it was invented in 2006, and duathlon was probably invented in the 1980s, swim run has 5.78 million Google results compared to duathlon's 8 million. They're catching up to us. And I gotta say, I gotta give a shout out to the Low Tide Boys, B-O-Y-Z, fifth or sixth result on google when you put in swim run they seem to be a swim run podcast their their website fifth or sixth result so shout out to the low tide boys seems like swim run has a more robust online slash podcast media infrastructure than duathlon has at least at this point it's not a competition i think i'm already declaring friendship with the Low Tide Boys, friends of the show, Low Tide Boys. Maybe I'll be friends of their show. Maybe we can unite against the triathlonic hegemony. That's it for this show. Thank you for joining. 
Hope you've learned something. I certainly have. The smart money is on Kevin Mayer, Perry 2024, Men's Olympic Decathlon. Stay dry, everyone. You can follow The Duathlon Show on Twitter and YouTube, at The Duathlon Show. Questions or comments? The Duathlon Show at gmail.com. If you enjoyed the program, please leave a good rating and review on the platform where you found it, and tell your friends. You can support The Duathlon Show by donating at ko-fi.com slash theduathlonshow.